Hello, friends, and welcome to Sleep Tight Stories. I'd like to say hello to Camelia from Melbourne, Australia. Hello to Campbell, Jack, and Fred from Australia. Hello to Ziggy and Chloe from South Africa. Hello to Leighton Dar, who is five, and Henry Dar, who is four. And hello to Victoria from Oregon. I'd like to say a happy belated birthday to Juliet from Oregon, who turned nine on October 15th. Happy belated birthday to Lenny from Duncan, B.C. on Vancouver Island, who turned three on October 21st. Happy belated birthday to L. Swan from Sydney, who turned five on October 21st. Happy belated birthday to Ryland Heller from Nebraska, who turned 11 on October 22nd. Happy belated birthday to Daya Mayshark, who turned four on October 22nd. Happy birthday to Carolina Gonzalez from Davenport, Florida, who is turning five on October 24th. Happy birthday to Buck Mangrum from Brooklyn, New York, who is turning eight on October 24th. Happy birthday to Nova, who has a birthday on October 25th. Happy birthday to Maya from Sydney, Australia, who is turning seven on October 26th. Happy birthday to Aryan from Hillsborough, Oregon, who is turning six on October 27th. Happy birthday to Annie Rose from Southern California, who is turning six on October 27th. Happy birthday to Kane, who is turning 10 on October 27th. Happy birthday to Mika Lilu, who is turning eight on October 29th. Happy birthday to Mia from Virginia, who is turning seven on October 30th. Happy birthday to you all. I hope you have a wonderful day. This is a story about a girl and her pet. Tessa lives on a farm and loves all the animals that live there with her and her family. As she is getting home from school, she goes to visit the pigs because one of them had a litter of piglets. Tessa sees that one of the little piglets doesn't seem to be getting enough attention and decides to take it as her pet. Tessa and Spotty the Pig It was a beautiful fall day, and Tessa was making crunching noises as she walked on the leaves that had been blown into piles by the wind. She had just gotten off the school bus and was walking up the lane to her Hampshire farmhouse. This afternoon, she was free, with no afternoon activities and no ringette practice. Tessa lived on a family farm that was surrounded by open fields, an apple orchard, and barns full of cows, chickens, and pigs. She loved living here and dreamed of becoming a veterinarian so that she could help animals everywhere lead happy lives. Today, before going into her house, she wanted to visit the pigs in the smaller barn that was adjacent to the huge open pen that they spent most of their days in. One of the pigs had had a litter of piglets, and Tessa had not yet gone in to see them. She thought piglets were just about the cutest thing in the whole world. Tessa walked into the barn and the large stall that the piglets were in with their mother. She knelt in the prickly hay and watched and listened to all the little pigs move about, making their cute snorting noises. The pigs were all perfectly pink, except for the smallest one at the very end. She had black spots all over her body, making her look just like a Dalmatian which Tessa thought made her the most beautiful pig 
she had ever seen. But she became worried because this little pig seemed to be all alone. At night, the piglets sleep very close together to stay warm. Sometimes, they even sleep on one another. But if this pig was all alone, how would it stay warm at night? That night at dinner, she asked her father about the litter of piglets that were in the pig barn. Daddy, why is that black-spotted pig so small? And she seemed to be alone all the time when I visited them this afternoon after school. Well, sometimes pigs are born small and need a lot more care than the others. And I can tell you think it looks cute because of all of its spots. I like our farm friends that look different, too. I could help the little pig, Daddy. I have time. It's a lot of work, Tessa, her mother said. And it's a lot of responsibility to look after a piglet. I know I can do it, Tessa said. I can go out in the morning before I get on the bus to feed her. And I can do the same when I get home from school. At night after dinner... I can go out and check on her, too, and make sure she is warm and covered. You have to make sure your homework is done as well, her mother reminded her. Okay, Tessa, but you need to start first thing in the morning. Tonight, I'll make sure that she is warm and covered in a blanket, her father said. The next morning, Tessa was up early and went to the barn to feed the spotted piglet. She sat in the hay and picked up the piglet and fed her some milk that her father had helped her prepare. I think I am going to call you Spotty, and we are going to be the best of friends, Tessa said. Spotty grunted in reply. Over the next couple of months, Tessa would go and visit Spotty twice every day, making sure she was well-fed and warm. Pigs are actually very smart, and so Spotty started to get excited whenever Tessa would come. Whenever Tessa would come to feed her, she would sit in the straw, and Spotty would run over and jump on her lap. They were becoming the best of friends. More importantly, Spotty was growing and seemed very healthy. But Tessa noticed that though Spotty seemed healthy, she wasn't as big as the other piglets. And perhaps because of all the attention that Spotty got from her, she still didn't seem to be accepted by the rest of the litter. This worried Tessa very much, because though it didn't get really cold in the barn in winter, it was important that Spotty was able to keep warm with the others when Tessa wasn't around. Tessa had an idea, but she needed permission from her mother and father first. That night at dinner, she decided to ask them. Spotty seems to be doing well these past couple of months. She is growing and eats everything I feed her, Tessa said. Yes, I'm proud of how you've been looking after her. You've done very well, Tessa, her father said. From what I have seen, Spotty seems to like your company, too. You are like two peas in a pod, her mother said. Yes, she always comes to me when I arrive and follows me around. She's more dog than pig. Spotty, my little Dalmatian, Tessa said with a laugh. I can see the resemblance. She's a cute piglet, her father said. While she seems to be doing very well these past couple of months, I'm concerned now that the weather is getting colder that she might be too cold out there in the barn, especially since her litter doesn't seem to accept her, Tessa said. So, I thought, I'm not sure I like where I think this is going, her mother interrupted. I thought perhaps I could take her inside the house over the winter. That way she would be warm. And didn't you tell me once, Daddy, how smart pigs are? I'm sure she could be trained to do her business outside, and I could help keep her clean. A pig, inside the house. Are you serious? 
her mother said, not convinced that this was a good idea. Well, we had that sick calf in our house before, and a chicken, and of course all the dogs. She has a point, her father said, with a big smile on his face. It's easy for the two of you to smile and agree. You spend most of your day outside of the house. I'm the one who works from home, her mother said, knowing already what the decision was going to be. She won't be a bother, mother, and I will prepare a place for her so that she doesn't bother anyone, Tessa pleaded. Her mother sighed, knowing that once Tessa felt strongly about something, it was best to let her learn on her own. Over the winter, Spotty had her own little room just off the kitchen where she would spend her days making pig noises and napping as she waited for Tessa to come home from school. Eventually, Tessa's mother realized that Spotty seemed very lonely and would from time to time let her out during the day. The length of time she spent out grew longer and longer until one day, She only spent time in her room when it was time to sleep. Spotty was now as much a part of the family as any one of the dogs. No matter where Tessa would go, Spotty would follow her. She would sit on the couch with her when she watched TV, lay at her feet when she did homework, and follow her around the farm when she did her chores. And eventually, one night... She crept up the stairs from her room by the kitchen, pranced into Tessa's bedroom, jumped up on her bed, no small feet for an animal with short legs, and cuddled up to sleep with Tessa. From that night forward, they always slept together, with Spotty's coos and snorts, helping Tessa have a good night's sleep. One night at dinner, when catching Tessa slips body some of her peas under the table, peas were Tessa's least favorite vegetable, her mother mentioned that with spring approaching, that maybe it was time to consider having Spotty move back out into the barn. But Mom, she's a part of the family now. She can't go back out into the barn. Yes, Tessa, she is a wonderful friend to us all. But with all the food you have been feeding her, she has grown like a weed. With her and all the dogs, there is almost no room for us in the house anymore, her mother said. Your mother does have a point, Tessa, her father said. The dogs spend most of the spring and summer outdoors. And like all of us on the farm, they have chores to do. They earn their keep, as my grandfather used to say. It would be good for Spotty to be able to roam safely with the other pigs. Once the spring mud dries, I'd like you to leave her outside during the day with the other pigs, and we will see how it goes, her father continued. Tessa sighed, just like her mother did months ago when Spotty was allowed to stay in the house with them. It was late spring on a Saturday, And as always, Spotty was following Tessa around the farm as she did her chores. Tessa knew that she had to go to town later and that before she left, she would need to leave Spotty with the other pigs in the large area outside that they roamed in. After Tessa finished her chores, they both sat on the step of her house as Tessa tried to tell her what was going to happen next. If you saw the way Spotty looked up at Tessa, you might think she understood everything she said. Then, just at the very edge of their garden, she heard a loud growl. It was a coyote. It was very rare for a coyote to come this close to the house or the barns. It was either sick or very, very hungry. The coyote continued to growl and slowly came closer to Tessa. Then suddenly the farm dogs ran out barking loudly to chase the coyote away. But the coyote just stood there 
growling louder at them and ended up chasing the dogs away crying. Tessa wasn't sure what to do. If she got up and ran quickly to the door, the coyote might hurt her or Spotty before she got inside the house. The coyote started to walk more quickly towards them. Then, with no warning, Spotty let out a loud screech and launched herself toward the coyote. No, Spotty, don't run towards the coyote, Tessa said, afraid that Spotty might get hurt. Spotty ran at the coyote, and the coyote, being scared, ran off with Spotty chasing her until they both couldn't be seen. Hearing all the commotion, her mother came out the door of the house to find out what was going on. Her father was running from the barns in the distance. Mommy, there was a coyote here and it chased the dogs away, but now Spotty has run after it and I'm afraid she might get hurt. Just before her father arrived, Spotty came trotting back from the bushes that lined the edge of their garden, snorting and grunting like nothing had happened at all. She had a big smile on her face. That night at dinner, Tessa's father said, Your mother and I have had a change of heart. Spotty can stay with us in the house for as long as possible. She has an important job to do. She has to be your best friend. And, as if in reply, from under the kitchen table, Spotty let out a great, big snort. And that's the end of our story. Good night. Sleep tight. <laughs>